No mai haramai ki fertility New Zealand. Malo alele. Hello and welcome to everybody to this very special event tonight. I'm Nicola Batossi, CEO of Fertility New Zealand, uh, and it's a real privilege to host tonight's event. So Fertility New Zealand is a charity which has been holding the hands of Kiwis wanting to become parents for the last 30 years. We've got a range of resources that are available as well as a, an 0800 helpline um, that are available supported by a panel of experts and it's all free of charge. We also have support groups running around the country and information events. So please do reach out to us if you're um, having any kind of issue um, becoming a parent and we would love to help you um, in whatever way we can on our journey. So tonight um, we're going to introduce somebody who really needs no introduction at, at all. So we have a uh, shot put champion and esteemed New Zealand athlete and leader, Dame Valerie Adams. Dame Hello. Valerie has um, very generously agreed to share her, um, her tough road to becoming uh, a parent. Um, as you'll know, she's now mother to two beautiful tamariki, ki Moana, and Kepalili. So um, welcome, uh, Dame Valerie, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. So how was your day today, training? Yeah, it's been practice? a day. Yeah, it's been a very busy day today. Um, I cold actually and quite windy down here. So it's I, I guess it's the same up in Auckland, a little bit windy today and cold. Yeah, quite wet at the moment. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So obviously, you know, training is your life and your career's um, been uh, amazing, really. And it started when you were a teenager. So was your career always your focus or was motherhood on your radar at all? Um, I think when uh, when you're really young, uh, being a mum has always been is, has always been in the back of your mind, but not in the front of your mind because um, doing athletics, being a kid, um, was was your priority. But when I lost my mum at the age of fifteen, I knew a that I wanted to be a mum, b I wanted to be a mum like my own mum, and also you know thinking at that young age oh, it was going to be no problem so I kind of went on and did athletics and um, continued on with my life and my career um, to only discover that when it, I thought I was ready to have kids and all the rest of it it was a little bit harder than I thought now I was healthy I was what I considered living a healthy lifestyle and I was fit and and, and all the rest of it so I didn't think anything of it until we came to um, start the process of trying for a baby and we tried the natural way and you know, nothing was happening and um, we have even had the ovulating uh, apps on the phone and the whole shebang but um, yeah nothing was happening but motherhood was definitely at the back of my mind when I started athletics but then it became closer and closer to the front of my mind towards the mid to mid part of my um, career but then it became to the forefront of my mind when I got married and when I knew that okay the time is coming and the time was feeling right to have a have a family and to start one and what was it like to to discover that that there was a problem conceiving uh, to be honest, it was quite heartbreaking um, at first, um, but I think the biggest thing for me was I thought it was my husband um, that had the issue because I was fit, you know, he's not as fit as I am, he's not as healthy as I am, I'm doing all the right things, his eating wasn't that flash, and, and he, everything like that went through my mind, so I didn't actually think I was the issue um, until the tests um, he they ran some tests on on Gabe and he was fine. Like his swimmers were swimming, they were healthy and they were doing just fine. And then um, finding out that actually I was the issue. I was the one that was riddled with endometriosis, and I was the one that stopped us from having a family. 
and that was quite devastating because that just never ever crossed my mind that you know there was going to be an issue and all of a sudden it became this big thing and I'd been sitting with all this endo my whole career and it obviously just got worse and worse over the years but I didn't actually know that it was happening until it was time to have a baby and the tests and stuff were done and actually I was worse than I thought when then they thought I was was at that stage so it was quite heartbreaking but really um gut-wrenching because all of a sudden your hopes and dreams are, are hanging on by the thread so you don't know what was going to happen next um and that was the downside to it but i do because you know for a, a, my husband for example you know i'm very blessed he's an amazing man so um calm and very humble and just so patient i've i challenged like i didn't cha oh, challenge his manhood is probably not the right thing but i you know this is a Pacific Island man. I'm saying, like, you know, all of a sudden you're the problem. But in fact, I needed to humble myself and be less prideful and take it upon myself to go and get tested because I was always the strong one. And all of a sudden, I needed to to calm down and actually look um, harder into my into my health, into my female healthy uh, health bits. You know, so not a nice day that day, but knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. You talk about not knowing what's um, what's next or what's in front of you, and we know that um, most people in our community say it's the the sense of a loss of control and just not having any control over the outcomes. Um, there's a few things you can control, as you say, with your lifestyle and things, but just that massive sort of unknown in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, but also. Um, you know, in the Pacific Island community, for example, when you're married, the expectation is you're going to have a baby. And at a, at a time when we were trying, the resentment came of seeing other people popping out kids left, right and centre. You know, how easy it was for them to do that. Um, my sister's had four kids. You know, she's had four kids. I shouldn't have any issues. I mean, my, my dad fathered many, many children type of thing. So here's me thinking, oh, I was going to go through the same process. It was all going to, be, you know, it was all going to be good. We're going to get into it, no big deal. But that wasn't the case. So you know, that having to deal with that side of things and the way we dealt with it was actually we decided not to tell anyone the processes we were going to go to next to try and have a kid um, because we felt my husband and I felt like. Um, it is a taboo subject within the Pacific community. Nobody talks about it. Um, it's more like if you have a kid, if, if you don't have children, you know, some people say, oh, it's a, um, it's, it's a curse. You've, you know, you've done something wrong or, you know, your parents have done something wrong. That's why you can't have a kid. And all of these um, pressures from family members and just, you know, your community around you isn't helpful. So, we decided not to tell anyone because of that. We didn't want added, added pressure to the processes we were going to go through to have a have a family. And truth be told, like, you know, when, when people cannot conceive naturally, you know, it's not their fault. And I would hope and pray that people who are watching this don't sit there and blame yourselves because it's not your fault, you know. Knowledge is power, and I found that out. And going to find out actually what was wrong with me was devastating because we hate to get bad news and, and negative news, and all of a sudden you end up blaming yourself, which I ended up doing, but decided real quick that actually what are we going to do to get through this? And it was my mission to, to talk about it openly once I had baby, my first baby, and publicly talk about it to try and encourage and empower our Pacific community to talk about it, to go and get help, to go and seek help because it's information. It could be something real simple that, that can be fixed, you know, just things like that, but don't feel like it's, it is your fault. We didn't tell Gabe's parents and my in-laws or any of our family members until Kimoana was born at the hospital when I had her in my arms because I didn't want a judgment before she was born, but I wanted her to arrive and then say, listen, we had Kimwana by IVF. Do you know what that is, first of all? And half of them said no. So then we explained 
um, the process of, you know, at the end of it, it was still my egg and it was still Gabriel's sperm. But instead of it, when it working its magic in me, they worked its magic somewhere else and then planted the seed and here she is. And all of a sudden, because they see this baby, the their reaction to it changed. Their reaction to it was different as to be, but I think if you explained it beforehand, they wouldn't understand or probably didn't want to, wouldn't want to understand exactly how she came to be. So it's still a quite a hard subject for me to talk about, but my goal is to reach out to more PI families, reach out to people out there who are scared to talk about it, um, who are afraid, who, you know, j just know that, that I'm here, that I would like, you know, I hope that I would like to empower you to take control of, of your life and the decisions that you make between you and your partner. That's wonderful advice. So after you got the diagnosis of endo endometriosis, mm -hmm. how did it go from there? Did you decide straight away to have treatment and did you go down that route or did you kind of take a while to, to absorb it? What was your plan? The, 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 process that, the processes that we went through, so um, before I found out I had endometriosis was uh, we tried naturally, then we decided to, to try the IVF um, line and we went through one cycle and we I didn't produce any eggs. They had one egg, but it was average. Um, there was pretty much probably next to no nothing of, uh, no chances of it surviving, yet they planted that and um literally the very they, they extracted it this, uh, i think it was a friday then i went back in on sunday they put it back in and that didn't survive um and when that one didn't survive i like i felt like the world was coming to an end and it was almost like mourning a death uh, to be brutally honest um i cried and because they wait for seven days um for it to try and stick and i woke up and got my period and just ran into the bathroom and you know bored my eyeballs out to Gabriel and I thought that was that was going to be the end of the world. Um, and people have been through it would understand what I'm talking about and the feelings that go with it. It is like mourning and death, one side, and then the other side is you are pretty much flushing thirteen thousand dollars down the toilet um, through an IVF process. So you do invest a lot of time, you do invest a lot of money, but that's how much you want this. So um, the specialist did some more tests on me and then found out that I had endometriosis quite badly. So they, they decided to put me on a different cycle, a longer cycle, um, which lasted, I think, seven weeks. And um, through that cycle, I was very, very lucky that um, I got seven, uh, seven eggs. And out of these eggs, my husband and I prayed um, for four eggs. And I ended up with seven, and out of the seven, four actually fertilized. Um, and that was such a miracle, and we were so blessed and very, very fortunate. But in, in saying that, you're not very, like, you're not 100% um, uh, too convinced until, you know, you get a, preg a pregnancy test that comes back positive. So out of that four, um, they planted they, they planted it in and um, one stuck and um, that was Kimwana. So I was very, very fortunate for that to happen. And when, to be honest, when I got the pregnancy test and uh, had to go do the wee wee part, I did the test about maybe six times because I still didn't believe it. And I had them all lined up in the row. And then the next day I went and got another six and lined them up in the row. And um, because I, was, I wasn't due for that blood test, you know, the, the famous blood test that you need to confirm that you are actually pregnant. Because I was still like, yep, this says I'm pregnant, but I'm still not 100% convinced that I am because I didn't want to get my hopes up because I knew how hard it was the first time around. So when I got the blood test back and it came back positive, it was the, the most amazing day ever um, for my husband and I because it was everything we could have dreamed of was all of a sudden becoming a reality in our lives. You're absolutely in the public eye. So dealing with all of this, um, mm -hmm. 
and being such a public figure must have just been incredibly difficult. It was very difficult, especially going into the clinics. Um, that that was quite hard for me because I, first of all, guys, I'm six four. Okay, I'm not the smallest person in the world, so I couldn't just like disguise myself, myself and go in. I kept a very low profile, and I and 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 I think to be honest, like in that situation, everybody that comes through that clinic um, is always anxious, is always very nervous, is always um, a bit unsure because everybody's at a different stage of the of their journey when they walk into this clinic. And I was the same, and I needed to, at the same time, try and protect myself and protect my husband and I throughout this journey from the public eye. So I was a risk of it getting out. I mean, to the point where I was going back and forth so much that the car park lady at the car park turned around and asked me if I was pregnant yet. So so I don't know how, I mean, I guess I was there so many times, she's probably seen many women come in and out. She just worked out what, or what I was doing there. Um, so it, it was very, very difficult, but I was determined not to let that um, hinder my wants of, of wanting this family and, and wanting this child with Gabe. And how did it impact your training? Um, so throughout the process of trying to get pregnant, I was trying to train at the same time, but my focus and my um, priorities at that time was to get pregnant and, and, and whatever it took. To, to, do, um, to do that. Obviously with the processes of each cycle, the hormone injections and all the injections that come with it is, is quite intense and takes a big toll on your body. You can be tired and grumpy and all the rest of it. Unfortunately for Gabriel, he got most of it. So I try to be as kind and as patient as possible, but it's very hard um, to control such emotions and such feelings when you're pumped with so you know with all these hormones to try and make your body do extraordinary things um but i coped with it but it, it, you know it's essentially for gabe and i at that time of our lives we wanted to have a kid and that was the priority and and i trade um the the training adapted to my cycle and what i needed to do and the person who was looking after me at the time um knew what I was doing and he was the only one that knew apart from Gabriel and I because of change of training sessions etc to try and suit both parties. Mm. How would you describe your fertility journey? How would you describe the impact that it's had on your life? It was a good experience. The, the whole experience itself um, was um, it was it's an emotional roller coaster. It hurts your heart, hurts your head, um, but it brought so many tears. It's brought my husband and I closer together, but also at some sometimes I really just wanted to scream. Um, but I'm very blessed that we have the opportunity to ha have a have something like this here in New Zealand that gives us a chance to be a parent and I can only um, you know give praises to the you know for the opportunity that I had to be a part of you know go to fertility associates and you know get them to help me make my dreams come true and, and I know that's not always the case for everyone but they enabled me to be a mum also to find out the fact that my LH levels were so low that I got the news that I was gonna I'm gonna be menopausing by the time I'm 43. Um, I was actually 33 when I was pregnant with Kimwana, and I just squeezed in to get my child, uh, my second boy, in there um, real quick after she was born, and that's the whole reason why I I used up all my eggs after Kimwana was born was to have that opportunity to give her a sibling, and you know, in God's will, he I was able to have. The opportunity to be a mum to two beautiful children but I feel so blessed um, to have my two babies and I am so grateful for science because science has helped me do this my husband and I be parents fertility is a real issue in New Zealand it's a real issue with um, for a lot of women out there and I just pray and hope that you find the courage to go out there and get information get the help that you need 
and speak to your GP and, and do whatever you got to do because it's worth being a mum. It really is. And you got the the beautiful prize at the end of it of your two uh, gorgeous children that I'm sure you treasure so much, given what you went through. Absolutely. Do you have a for those people who have been through um, through failed cycles and you know having trouble finding hope, it's so hard. It's so hard, but acknowledge the feelings go through it, cry, um, do all those things because it is important. Um, but I guess don't stop trying. Um, I can only, you know, give my love and, and, and prayers to you throughout this journey. It isn't easy for anyone. Um, it definitely wasn't easy for us, but I want you to know that there are people out there that, that want to help, that are there, that can help. And if things are so hard, there are helplines out there to help you through the journey as well. I think that's the best part about it because these people have a different set of skills that deal with people like you and I who have failures and their type of counselling suits what we're going through right now because this is not, this is common, but it's not out there in the mainstream. It's, it's a very particular area. And also remember to be as nice as you can to your partners because even though they may not be feeling, you know, all the hormones and all the injections and all the rest of it, they are also, they also hurt. And I learned this through my husband. They also hurt when a cycle doesn't work. And, and they also feel the your pain or that pain of their loss um, chance as well to, to be a dad or to be a parent. So just acknowledging your feelings is, is quite important. Kara, do you have any particular messages for uh, Pacifica women and, and men? Um, let's just put our pride aside to all of my Pacific Island brothers out there. Um, if your lady and your beautiful wahine is going out there getting all their tests and all the rest of it done, you know, man up and do the same thing because they need your support as well. This is definitely a team effort. Um, don't be afraid to reach out to all my Pacific peeps out there. There is help. Um, speak to your GP. And, you know, there are people out there who are willing to help. And like, definitely through Fertility New Zealand, you can make those connections. Um, I know how hard it is within the Pacific community. But don't forget, at the end of the day, this is your journey with your partner and no one else's. And no one else should matter. And that was a big decision that Gabe and I made. And we don't regret it whatsoever. But the joy of... Um, telling them at the end of the day when the prize was finally in our hand was was so was so beautiful because um, it made it real all of a sudden. But don't be afraid to do what you got to do to have your family. That's a beautiful message. Um, if anybody has any questions for Dame Valerie, please feel free to type them into the, the chat box if you've joined by a webinar. Uh, if you're with us from Facebook, um, you can send us send us a message. Um, coming back to your point, Valerie, 26% of New Zealanders experience and in their lifetime, it's actually a quarter. So it's um, it's it's really is a, a massive proportion of of people. Struggle is real. It's it's really real. In there, so in my video. Um. So, do you believe your faith has grown has grown stronger? Um. Yeah, I do. Um, definitely. Uh, I'm quite a, um, a worldly person. I, I, my, my faith has grown stronger, but my um, belief in science is also growing a lot stronger as well in the meantime. Um, 
but it is important to have that balance um, in my life and it's definitely blessed me and, and, and my family and it um, keeps us stronger and, and a lot closer together. Thank you, Stacey, for that question. Gemma Kiley has just sent a message. She's watching this while um, breastfeeding her four-month-old IVF baby, and that's from the Facebook page. So good on you, Gemma, and congratulations. What a beautiful, beautiful scene that must be right now. And four-month sleep regression. Good luck. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, and there's another message there now. Oh, yes. I can relate, Amy. Oh, thanks, Amy. Beautiful message. How did you feel when you became pregnant over the 12 weeks? Were you just as anxious? Well, that's from Kayla uh, off the Facebook page. Um, Kayla, for the first 12 weeks, to be brutally honest with my first kid, I was super um, nervous, very anxious, and I was super over-the-top careful because this was all of a sudden uh, more of a precious package that I didn't want anything to happen with. And for the first 12 weeks, it was very hard. A, you got to you know keep it quiet. And B, you got to just be careful because it is the, the danger zone. Now, with my second baby, on the other hand, things are a lot different. I was obviously been through the first pregnancy, second one, I just carried on as per usual. And um, I knew my limits and I knew, uh, you know, where the safe zone was. So I just um, carried on as per usual. But definitely the first 12 weeks were quite intense. So I had to be super, super careful. With finding out you have endo, what did you do to mentally prepare yourself for this journey? Um, when I found out I had endometriosis, I, I had to research um, to further my knowledge on this and, um, in fact, find out, um, you know, how it all came to be. So that explained why my periods were so painful when I was growing up. Um, my mum had it quite badly um so it was definitely within the genes um but i had to prepare myself and for me i found it easier if i knew what was going on and i needed a plan i'm that type of person that if i knew what was going on with whatever in my life i need a plan to 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 deal with it and and that's what i did um i made sure i had a plan because a plan because that was better for my head than not having a plan and just going along and going with the flow I'm not really wired like that. So to have have that knowledge and then have a plan in place with, um, you know, good specialists and people around me, uh, when I say people around me, that was people at the um, specialist place and also Gabriel that had to, had to deal with me, it was a lot easier for me to go through it um, with them. But um, it was one to, to swallow, that's for sure. But once I found out and, and read about it, it became evident to me that it was actually a bigger issue than I thought it might be. Because you get... But, also, the issue that I found was because you can't see it physically, it never bothered me, but all of a sudden to see it on a scan and actually find out how big and bad it was, I processed that in my mind um, over about a, about a week, or, week or so, and then I had a plan to deal with it. Did you change your diet or make any other changes to your lifestyle whilst going through IVF? No, I didn't. I just carried on as per usual. And... Um, yeah, just did the IVF uh, cycles on the side and just lived my life as much as possible. Yep. Hayley Robertson, good luck for your first IVF cycle in January. It's crossing my fingers, really. I send you my best wishes and all my love for that because it's quite a scary process, but good luck to you and your partner. Um, da, 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 da. We are struggling a signal recently. A little son, I would love you to know any advice, tips you found that helped you cope. Okay, thank you for being so open and vulnerable, Valerie. We are struggling with secondary infertility to have a sibling forever. I would love you to, not to know any advice and tips you found that help. Um, I'm really sorry, struggling with um, the second um, baby, but. 
aren't you blessed with number one and um focusing on him will help a lot um just keep the faith but also focus on the, on what's in front of you and and just how blessed you are to have that little boy with you it'd be awesome to have a have a sibling for them uh, definitely that was um our hopes and dreams for Kimwana, and we are so blessed with it but it's not easy at all but the, definitely keep the faith and also just continue to to be positive and focus on on your little boy as well um because he definitely deserves all the love successful transfer was there anything you did on the successful transfers that you think made the difference i don't um i didn't do anything in particular i just um I guess the quality of the egg the second time round, I think, was a lot better than the first time round. That probably made a, a big difference. Um, the first time was just a fresh transfer, and the quality of the egg wasn't very good. So the second time round, the second, the longer cycle that I went on for seven weeks, the egg quality was a, a lot better, and um, maybe that made the difference. I don't know, but. Um, so it's, it's like anything, everything is not 100% guaranteed. It's, you know, whatever percentage it, 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 it is, but we we're very, very lucky the second time around for sure. Uh, Lisa Lillewey, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing your unofficial Pacifica spokesperson for IVF. Our miracle Georgia, almost three years old. Oh my gosh, Lisa. Thank you so much for your beautiful message and congratulations for just having a beautiful three-year-old daughter, same age as my baby. So isn't that awesome? And good to see a Pacific sister up in here. Hopefully you can also have the courage to share your story with um, your loved ones and your friends and family around you who might be in the same situation. I am quite open about it when I know my friends and family are going through the same situation, hoping that I could share my story and get them the help that they need as well. I was wondering what you do to help manage your endometriosis sy symptoms while going through fertility treatment. Um, my pain threshold is quite high, and I guess I've been dealing with endometriosis for a very, very long time throughout my life. So when I found out that I had it, um, it didn't actually change the way I dealt with it, which was just get on with, with life. I know that some people have it worse than others, but uh, mine has been pretty bad over the years however i just i, I kind of dealt with it and maybe having pains from training and being sore in other ways just took my mind off anything else that was going on so it's probably wasn't a bad thing for me but um good luck if you're going through this right now and hopefully you're able to get um the help that you need that was from amy I only talked about resentment. What are you, okay? Oh, sorry for all your questions. That's all right, Stacy. What are some tips you have in dealing um, in this emotion? Oh, that okay. Really, only talked. Oh, so she's asked me questions about the resentment I was talking about, um, and I guess that's from uh, resenting other people and um dealing with that so at the end of the day it's not their fault that people thought that i can't have a baby but there was a bit of resentment because you can see your friends family and people that walking past your house or their fano van full of children and, and and you can't have it and there is there there was resentment feelings or ill feelings within myself but i needed to to actually pull it back and realize and acknowledge the fact that it's not, first of all, it's not their fault that I can't have children. And secondly, um, this is my life and, and my female bits that are not, not working. So acknowledging that and going that, getting the help that I need, but you do, like, it's, it's human nature um, that you do feel like that. And if you're feeling like that, that's okay. Um, but acknowledging it and why you're feeling like that is, valid as well because all you want is that perfect um you know the, the situation you want a baby to love and you want you know this baby to love you back but it's it's not easy but i acknowledge it and you know knew that it was part and parcel of this journey that i was in um but then quickly realizing that actually it's not their fault and i needed to just chill out and come back to my own journey um because 
they're blessed of children. I wasn't blessed of children naturally. However, I'm blessed in other ways. And, you know, things swings and roundabouts, and that's just the way it is. Uh, also wondering if you had to reduce your training and competition load during your journey. Yes, I did. So this is one thing that I um, did do with my first. Is, uh, you know, I, I was told about the loading and the training and the sweating and the all the rest of it. I think stress in the body whilst you're going through the um, treatment or what, through the cycle. So I had to monitor that as well. Hence why the, the coach knew what was happening, so then we can monitor and um, plan accordingly. So that they did uh, talk to me about that, and I had to adjust what I was doing to to fit the IVF cycle to the training and not training to the IVF cycle because we all know that's not going to happen but also we needed to you know fit the IV, uh, the IVF cycle into the your period cycle which is a whole nother story as well so there was a lot of cycles going around you just had to commit to the important one that was in front of you and do as you're told which I'm not very good at but um I think we're good. Any pep pepe or mama products you live by? Um, no, I don't really. Um, to be honest, I'm I'm quite easy peasy with my children. Um, <laughs> good old some water in the lukewarm water in the bath, and um, just chuck in some uh, good old bubble bath, and be happy. Um, and yeah, I'm don't really live by anything. I just go with the flow. I'm quite an easy mum. Whatever grandma decides to put on them, that's easy. Cool, go with the flow. So it takes a village, that's for sure, to, to raise a child. I've learned that one real quick. There's one more question there on the, uh, on the messenger. Yeah. Uh, what were the challenges of IVF and trying to explain to your Pacific family? Um... The challenges of IVF having explained to them was um, so you got to so you got to okay so let me just take it back a notch so in the you know Pacific Island Fano family um, you know how do they have babies through the natural way that's how they they have learnt it that's how they've always known it to be and that's how they'll continue to think it's going to be but having to explain to them the processes of um, the, the way we had Gimwana and how long it took us to have her and what we went through, that was quite hard. So luckily, husband has um, was very uh, into this and knew everything that was going on. So he's a lot better at explaining it in a more scientific way. So I got Gable to do the explaining to mum and dad in particular, um, what we went through and just explain to them uh, on very simple terms First of all, why we went down this road and, and, you know, letting them know that we, you know, had tried naturally and all the rest of it wasn't working. Um, B, letting them know that I had the issue and, you know, we needed to take another route. And then the processes we went through to have Gimwana. So explain that more in a very simple way to them was our go-to. Um, but simplify, simplifying it so much that they understood the journey and understood why we needed to go through through this journey and um, for them to understand how it all works um, because it's not easy to understand the whole process if you're not in it 100%. It's definitely one of those things that um, one must explain slowly to them. So it was interesting because that was kind of like the first day and then the first week later, one week later, in a month later, the conversations kind of um, continue to, to continued um, and they asked more questions I guess when they processed what was going on um, and then wanted to know more so that was quite a good thing for us because we didn't you know, only explain it to them we also educated them about you know this other way of conceiving a baby or having a, ha having a child and having a family and that was quite empowering for them you know I'm very lucky that I had very understanding in-laws um i have a very understanding family explaining it to my sister how it went and to be honest my sister just um uh, broke down because she wished she had known earlier that i was going through this so she can help me through it the way she could 
I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm getting emotional about this, but um, like she wished that she had known as my older sister because my mom is no longer around. And, um, you know, she was the closest mom to me. My sister's had four kids, but she wanted, I guess, after I told her after having Kimwana, she wanted to be a part of that journey and wanted to help me through it. So I kind of regret not telling her earlier, but it was the best decision for Gabriel and I, and we had decided on that. So, you know, each family member took it, you know, the, the way they wanted to take it, and but it was a positive outcome for us. Now, that might not always be the case for everyone, but going back to what I said at the start, doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. At the end of the day, it is your egg, it is your sperm, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, and that's just the way it is. You know, they're still your children. Like, at the end of the day, Kimwana is still my child, and so is Gipalele. Regardless of how they were made, they're still mine by blood. So, yeah, good luck to everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much for so openly sharing um, sharing your your challenges and your journey. Um, I'm sure that everybody really appreciated it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much Thank for you having so me. Much. Thank you. Sorry, there's just one more question here about um, is there anything that your husband found that helped him throughout his journey. Gabriel didn't really speak to anybody about this um, outside of um, our tight circle specialist and myself. So I think um, that was his choice and he wanted to keep it that way. Um, so we spoke to each other and that was our our helpline. But if you are going through this and and your partner or your husband is, um, is going through this and needs to speak to someone, there is help through Fertility New Zealand for our for our men out there um, to to get the help that they need, whatever counselling or whatever is needed, I know it's available. So please don't be shy to, to um, reach out. But to everybody who has tuned in um, to this live, uh, best of luck if you're going through this journey. Um, stay positive. I'm sending you all my aroha and God bless and just know that you guys are worth it. Kia ora. Thank you so much, Dame Valerie. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Kakite.